Thank you, uh, thank you, Dennis, and Boa uh, Tarji. You know, Sao Paulo in Brazil is such a good place. Uh, I have not, this is my first time in South America, and uh, the people here are so great. And Sao Paulo is so great. I made a phone call back to uh, edX in Boston, saying I'm going to be staying here and working from here online from now on. <laughs> it's all going to be online anyway, so uh, I'm really delighted to be here. And thank you all for, uh, thank you all for coming. Um, I'm going to talk about online education and uh, also edX. So when you hear about online education, you will hear about all kinds of things, about how many students are taking these courses all around the world. You'll hear stories about how many countries are involved. But at the end of the day, just like the title says, it's all about how do we reimagine education? How do we really rethink how we do education? And if you heard the talk from, uh, I think it was Jose uh, Ferrero this morning, uh, he had some really nice charts where he showed how education has transformed itself through the centuries. And he pointed to the 1700s and the 15, 1442 when the printing press was invented as to when a big revolution in education happened, when we went from speaking and remembering things to a textbook. And then in the, uh, uh, in the uh, 17 and 1800s, we went to a new method where education K through 12 was required. Uh, he did forget one thing, though. In 1862, the blackboard was invented. Okay, so that was chalk and blackboard was pretty good. But really not much has happened since then. I'll give you an example. So this was a classroom in... Uh, this little uh, three-letter institute in the northeast of the USA, uh, in this town called Cambridge. This is uh, a classroom at MIT. And this was a classroom at MIT about uh, 50, 60 years ago. And uh, this is a classroom today. What has changed? The seats are in color. <laughs> but. Not much else has changed, and, and the number of stories uh, abound. So there's a story of uh, this guy, you know, Rip Van Winkle, you know, uh, you go to sleep for a while, and if you went to sleep in, in a classroom 50 years ago and you wake up today, you know, nothing really has changed. Maybe the seats are in color. So, um, and this is at one of the leading institutes in the world where technology is applied every day to all kinds of fields, whether it's uh, healthcare, whether it's transportation, and so on and so forth. But really, we have not applied technology to education in a concerted manner. If you look at healthcare, if you go back to the past few hundred years, we've transformed everything. We've invented anesthesia, we've invented penicillin, we've in invented the x-rays, tomography, just a whole bunch of technologies. But if you look at education, really not much has changed. And um, as educators, shame on us. Even beyond education really not having changed much in the past few centuries, um, a lot of places in the world do not even have access to basic education. So uh, this, is, um, this is a classroom, believe it or not. This is not a soccer game. This is a classroom at uh, Abu Fame University in uh, Nigeria. So here, notice that uh, the professor is teaching down here, and all the students are watching the class from all around. Now, we all have heard of distance education. But these people here are having long distance education. So, uh, so those of the people that argue that online education will not connect professors to students, they haven't seen this. Okay, my students are already far removed from uh, the professor, and uh, we can do a whole lot better than uh, what we have out here. So edX was formed uh, about a year ago. It's a nonprofit venture. It was created by MIT and Harvard, where they invested $60 million into this effort to really transform education. There's four major components to uh, edX. It's vision was to transform education, to provide increased access to education for students all over the world. At the same time, a big part of our mission at edX 
is to reimagine how education happens in our own campuses. So we want to change education on our campus, and we also want to increase uh, access to education. As I was walking outside, uh, I'll show you how many students we have from Brazil. We have uh, close to over 30,000 students from Brazil, and I was walking outside, uh, two people came up to me and said, uh, you know, I've taken uh, edX courses. So uh, our, a big part of our mission is, uh, it's a nonprofit mission. We believe that education is a basic human right. And the decisions we make as, a, as an enterprise should really be based on principles. Now, we will be self-sustaining. So we will get lots of revenue. But that said, we want, to make we want to make very principled decisions about how we do things. So we are based on an open source platform. So as we build our platform, we've announced two days ago, uh, we announced that, uh, no, it was yesterday. I'm, I'm uh, losing track of time. So yesterday we announced that edX will open source its platform completely on June 1st. This means that anybody in the world can take all our software and see what it's like and use it uh, themselves. It's also a portal, a destination. So if you haven't checked it out, I encourage you to go to edX.org and see what these courses are like. You will find free courses from some of the best universities in the world. We do a lot of research. In the morning talk by, uh, by Jose uh, from uh, uh, Ferrero from uh, Newton, he talked about data and how to be gathering just volumes and volumes of data. And I'll show you some of our own results at edX. We are gathering just huge amounts of data as we have hundreds of thousands of students all over the world taking our courses. We are gathering data on how they learn. We are capturing every single event that these students make, and we're capturing all of the data. And I'll show you some very interesting results. I like to think of edX as the particle accelerator of learning. I believe that as, as universities do research, we are going to discover the Higgs boson equivalent of learning. Okay, we haven't even seen the beginning of the kind of things we can discover. And with edX, we're a nonprofit, so we are going to make all the data that we're gathering. We're not going to keep it proprietary to edX. Just like our courses are free, our platform will be freely available to anybody in the world, and our data, we are also going to make available all our data in anonymized form to all our partner institutions, so all the institutions can together do research on this data, and a number of papers are already being published. So this is what it means to be a nonprofit, where we make these decisions, where we're making, providing access to all of this data so our partner institutions can together collaborate and do research on how students learn, so that our hope is that we will improve education for everybody in the world. One of the big aspects of online learning is scalability. Okay, we heard a lot today about some spectacular talks this morning about uh, you know, the schools in San Diego, uh, the, you know, the schools in California, how incredibly creative instructors and, and educators are changing and transforming students' lives. The one new twist that edX adds is scale. We add a few zeros. Now, each zero may not count for much, but when you string them together, the numbers are huge. So as an example, we launched our first course in uh, January of last year. I had no marketing budget. We just announced that on, uh, uh, publicly announced that with zero marketing dollars. And in the first 10 hours, we had 10,000 students from around the world register for our first course on circuits and electronics. And this course... And we were marketing, you know, uh, we, we didn't lie. We said that this course was going to be MIT hard. This course was going to require differential equations as prerequisites. 